Hey, everybody, it's the coach. You're tuned in to Sunday Night Football on EA Sports. We are moments away from what should be an excellent matchup between the Minnesota Vikings and the Tennessee Titans. I'll join you again at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from earlier this afternoon. But for now, it's Sunday Night Football. And on the call, as always, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All in all, we have a pretty pleasant December day in the Volunteer State. The chilly rain from last night has moved on. The temps have bumped up a bit here at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Minnesota Vikings and the Tennessee Titans. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we take a look at this Titan ball club entering play. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Vikings, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. And I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. Three quarters of the NFL season are complete. What lurks in our final month? We're underway in week 14. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. So the Titans set to go to work for the first time. They'll have a former Heisman Trophy winner calling the shots, hailing from the island of Oahu in Hawaii, Marcus Mariota. Brandon, I don't know about you, but when I heard he threw five touchdown passes last week, I thought, well, he's going to be the AFC Offensive Player of the Week. I didn't need to hear any other stats, and it turned out to be right. That's exactly right. Seemed like every time we turned around, he was throwing one in the end zone. But he doubled down. He said, I see five more in this game. Challenge accepted. Challenge. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. And we roll now on the graphics for the offensive starters. Let's take a look at the left tackle, Taylor Lewan. A big, gregarious guy with great athletic ability. Plays the game with a little bit of an edge. In fact, he doesn't play to the whistle. He plays to the echo of the whistle. From the 30 on second down, Mariota throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Taewon Taylor, and it's third down. Here now, the starters defensively for the Vikings. They were terrific a week ago in the win over the Lions. And all defensive teams that I know talk about creating turnovers, takeaways they call them. And anytime you can get two or more in a game, you've had a really, really good performance. They exceeded that number in a big way. On third down, Mariota. And that is incomplete. That's a pretty good opening possession defensively. And you know the goal is to make something of a statement, especially on the road with your first defensive possession, isn't it? Go right out and establish yourselves and let them know this is going to be tough going all game long. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. He'll send this up into the Nashville skyline, and it's a good one. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. So here come the Vikings as they get set for their first drive. Orchestrating the offense, the former three-time captain at Michigan State, quarterback Kirk Cousins. And it felt like in watching the game tape, he got everyone involved last week. You he know? was a manager. He really was. That's a great way to put it because they ran the ball some. They threw it accurately. One touchdown pass. So he didn't, you know, break the bank doing that, but he didn't throw any interceptions. That's the bottom line. That's why a defense loves a quarterback like that. Doesn't Stephon Diggs. Touchdown, Vikings. Stephon Diggs. 81 yards as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. 
an ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And as this offense makes their way back out, NFC playoff race time. We give you a look at what's going on there. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Throwing again on second and 10. Mariota, Corey Davis, the intended receiver. And it's third down. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and 10. Throwing, Mariota. And he'll hit his tight end, Walker. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. He takes this for three to the 29. Let's take a look here at the offense for Minnesota. And we expected to have already talked about this unit. We didn't get a chance to hit on them on the opening drive because they scored so quickly. But that's the kind of unit this is, a quick strike offense. I expect to see them taking their shots all game long. And if that's the case, we'll find ways to talk about this group. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. On third down, Cousins. And he's able to find Diggs. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. It's just me and you. It's just me and you. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Throwing the out route and complete. That's Lamb. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. A gain of six there on first. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Play fake, Cousins. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. I call it no gain there on the first down play. On the defensive side, here are the starters for Tennessee. They were fantastic a week ago in the win over Houston. I just considered myself fortunate that I'm not in charge of the offensive line. They gave up <laughs> seven sacks last week. And if things don't improve in this game, the head coach isn't going to be looking at the offensive line. He's going to be looking at the offensive line coach. And that's when things get dicey. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line. So it's second and 10. 
Rudolph on the receiving end from Cousins. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 38-yard line. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got heck of a tight end candidate. Draw play, Cousins to Cook. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So that one will be accepted. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. And he lost the football. It's picked up by the Titans. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. From the gun, here's Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks, don't let them get there, and they rallied and made the tackle. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Now it's McNichols. Now a timeout being called as there's an injured Titan down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now Mariota. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Say hello to Eric Kendricks. He gets the sack there. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? typically a blitz and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen now that allows your blitzers to get there third and long here for Mariota and he's got a man Corey Davis and he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone and this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 20 yard line He's such a good route runner, shows it there on third down, very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's gonna have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Officially no gain on the play and it's second down. Line, line. 
Throwing on second down. Mariota. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Now, keep in mind, they did have three interceptions last week. Couldn't quite come up with a first-quarter pick that time. But they had to like what they saw in terms of reacting when the ball is thrown. We had an expression when I played. It was called break on it. Every time the quarterback puts the ball in the air, break on the football. Go make a play and accumulate those interceptions. Former defensive back, you remember those three interception games. They can be contagious, give you a little momentum. They really can, and it doesn't matter whether it's one person or if you spread them across your entire defense, everybody wants a piece of that pie. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, Less of a field goal attempt for him. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. Third and short yardage, Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Cousins to his tight end, Rudolph, for a Viking first down. First down, here's the run with Cook. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. There are the numbers for Cook from a week ago. 23 carries, 98 yards, too shy of 100. And as we discovered in talking with the coaching staff prior to the game, going up against a team that struggled against the run has only emboldened them to run the football more. I expect 40 to 50 carries in this game. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he, one of the bigger targets on the field, the tight end could be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. No gain on the play there. Second down. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming, pick them up, pick them up. And someone jumped. It's a loss of two, now third down. Uh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jarrell Casey in there to get him, and on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. He is proving his worth defensively. Getting the sack here, that comes after being named the AFC Defensive Player of the Week for his performance in last week's game. He's stacking games together, isn't he? I mean, you just mentioned what he did the previous week to be named AFC Defensive Player of the Week, continuing to play at that level. And when you get that kind of confidence going, those kind of guys are hard to stop. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 15. Now a dump off here complete. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. Mariota on first down. And Walker has it. A gain of six there on first. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. On second down, Dawkins and tackled down after a gain of three, leaves him with one yard to go on third down. The Titans on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. 
And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now a first carry for their fullback. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. And to give this time to the tailback. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be second and 12. They'll try to throw now. Mariota. That's complete to Taewon Taylor. 22 yards there, a first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10, down at the 33. Working out of the gun, Mariota. It's brought in by Adam Humphreys. And the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. The first red zone opportunity for the Titans. They come up first and 10 at the 16. They'll run on first down. Dawkins, and he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the nine. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. So they don't even need to run a second down play. Give them the first. And typically when we see this jumping, is it usually third down, fourth down? They got them on second down. I think that's a lack of discipline. Throwing is Mariota. In trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. Stephen Weatherly able to record his fifth sack of the season. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decide to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. Mariota. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. So two plays with only negative yardage to show, and now it's third and 16. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. And he fires one, but incomplete. Well, so a drive that spans all that time, and yet you may only come away with three points here. Well, your defense, all right, they actually like these long drives. They get to rest over on the sidelines for a while, but when you're not finishing with points in terms of touchdowns, that's frustrating. They've got to figure out how to close out these long drives and get sixes instead of threes. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves them with a very manageable second and one. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Cousins gives way to Cook, and no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. On second and nine, Cousins. It's complete to Diggs. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The Vikings on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and seven. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. 
Jarrell Casey has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. And keep your eye on that man. Four sacks last week, one there here in the second quarter. He can be so disruptive. So what was he doing in the first quarter? What was going on? Took a nap. <laughs> I think he tried to lull him to sleep a little bit. Like, yeah, okay, maybe you've got me this week. No longer. And you know, with the four sacks last week, it's obvious he gets his in flurries. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Eric Kendricks in on the tackle. Throwing on second and eight. Mariota finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he's going to get this from the 6 out to the 12. A pickup of 6 as they double their workspace. The Titans on third down. They've converted just 2 for 6 thus far. This time they face a third and 2. Now Mariota completes it to Davis. And he's going to have the first down as he's marked down just shy of the 20. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Watch the slip, watch the slip. On first down, Dawkins. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They'll run it here. This is their fullback getting the carry. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that is going to set up a third and one. On third down, Dawkins. Uh-uh, he is going nowhere as he is enveloped behind the line. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the v feeders on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. Here's Stephon Diggs as he and the rest of the offense get ready to go again. He's up over 100 yards, has the touchdown. He's, <laughs> he's a big-time receiver in this league, so the question becomes, how do you limit him going forward? Well, you know the guys trying to cover him? They haven't had a whole lot of success thus far, and, and while they will still accept the challenge, maybe you have to change your focus. You have to get after the quarterback a little bit, disrupt his timing, because right now it feels like pitch and catch. Make sure he's not able to have clear sight lines to him, and maybe that'll slow him down. And this is not the guy you want to let play pitch and catch. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Coming up in a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. The coach will have stats and scores from earlier today in the NFL. Complete. Smith has it. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. We'll call that a 43-yard punt, two on the return, and it'll be Titan football. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He finds Humphreys. A gain of 19 in picking up the first. Let's go, baby. On first and ten, here's Mariota. Oh, he can't hang on. That was a dream chance for any D-lineman to possibly get a pick. But instead, it falls down incomplete. On second and ten, 
Mariota. This will be caught by Brown. A gain there of 21 yards. Get ready, get ready, get ready. It's a gain of 21 yards. That's good. Mike, 54. Check, 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 check. Check, check, check. A first down throw for Mariota. He'll find Taylor. That's complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal, and it's caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. From the two now, second and goal. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. Delaney Walker in the final seconds of the first half. And the Titans have taken the lead. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. Brett Maher on for the extra point. And he puts this one through as the lead moves to 13-7. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And the result in the end, a Titans touchdown. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one. Go to the locker room. Start over. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. From there, let's head off and check out a second game. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. In our game, it was Marcus Mariota with a strong first half. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Titans hold the lead, and they'll get the football first as the third quarter gets underway. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Cousins now 13 of 15 passing. That's good for 87%. It's for Cook. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. 12 yards there. First down, Vikings. Put a premium in the first half, but he's able to fire, and he's hoping the precursor of a big second half. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Now a quick, that's complete on the hitch route. 
And he's out of bounds right around the 40. The completion good for three, and it's second down. On second down now, Benjamin. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Open man is Thielen, it's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 22-yard line. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And now it's second down to throw Cousins letting one go deep for the end zone and that's going to wind up incomplete however we do have a flag down let's check in with our referee I think you'd agree that looked like the right call from up here no doubt about it what everyone has to understand is that the officials are going to be right on the play each and every time you may not like the call and that'll be caught by Diggs for a Minnesota touchdown Stephon Diggs, his second touchdown of the night. And now they can recapture the lead if they can make the PAT. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? <laughs> you know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another review. look at this potential touchdown. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for. And this touchdown will count. Extra point right down the middle. And that will put them on top here in the third. So that drive goes eight plays. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. This will be taken very short. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Now Mariota. And they get to Mariota here as he's dropped on the sack. Daniil Hunter, what a season he continues to have, his 15th sack of the campaign. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything, nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Here's Brett Kern now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Returning, it's Benjamin. Call that one an even 60 yards. 6-0. Let's go! 
Kirk Cousins and the Vikings offense back on the field. He is looking to help his team build their lead after trailing at halftime. They've got to like the spot they're in right now. They have to love it, but as you and I both know, cliche alert coming here. You're only as good as your last possession, but I think that they like, as you said, the spot they're in and how confidently they're playing at this point. Uh, but again, just a one possession lead, looking to expand that now. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Cook. It's a six yard gain on the ground and that'll make it second and four. From the 38, Cousins throwing for his running back and he's got him complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 45 yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. They get just two out of it there, and it's second down. Throwing on second and eight. Cousins, pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Roughing the passer, defense. The hit comes late, we saw it, there's your flag. And we know that there's a guideline, right? Ball's gone, you get one step. If you're within one step of the quarterback, you can hit him as long as it's still done legally. But anything outside of that, looks like an extra step was involved. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Oh, you got deep. Throwing his cousins. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 26. Cousins now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. The throw right sideline here is complete. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Cousins. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. They go play action. Cousins. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations, because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. And this one is right down the middle. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case, stepped right up like a pro. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Titans' offense set to begin the drive. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And that is incomplete. Corey Davis, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Hit comes, and he lost the football. Mariota had it jarred loose. And the Vikings pick up the football. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave them a comfortable lead. Yeah. 
Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Marcus Mariota and the offense heading back out for their next possession. He has seen the halftime lead evaporate in, in his first half play. Hasn't really carried over to the second half. Blitz coming and down he goes. The sack is by Janoris Jenkins coming in off the corner. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. Not a great start to this drive. You had the sack, now the false start. I mean, it doesn't take much to either read lips or just imagine what the head coach is saying right now. Get your head in the game, guys. Let's go. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. It'll be a two-yard game, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. To throw Mariota. It fights him off. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. Daniil Hunter, what a season he continues to have, his 15th sack of the campaign. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Here's Brett Kern now. Standing just outside his own goal line. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. We well go. struck. Here we, go. Here we go. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Ten yards and it's good for a Viking first down. Cousins on first down. Benjamin's got it. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Cousins now from the 50, and it's incomplete. It was Kenny Vaccaro there to get a hand on that one. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. They'll throw again, Cousins. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They'll run on first down. Benjamin. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. An ideal spot here to get a first down and try to run some more clock. And this is second and less than a yard. Now we've got movement up front. And I think this is going to be on Minnesota. 
Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got him for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked off by Logan Ryan, and he returns it here to his own 18-yard line. Two-score game here in the fourth, and that pick, it kind of keeps the door ajar, doesn't it? It does, and you wonder about their strategy because with a two-score lead, you would think maybe you're just sitting on and trying to drain some clock. It's almost like they felt like, hey, we've got a good cushion. We can keep pressing it. It ended up costing them. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. From the gun, Mariota. And he rifles one incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Mariota now. It's caught by Davis. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. Now an inside draw. This is their fullback. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Here we go, here we go. Mariota. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they've got it inside the ten at the eight. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Second down and goal. Mariota, uh, he's got it. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Third and goal, Mariota. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. A one-yard touchdown reception as his guys are back within a single score. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. But he will not get in here. He stopped up short of the goal line, and this will remain a five-point game. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offense has spent a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. A five-point game now as here comes the kickoff. This will be taken about the 12. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. <laughs> Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive. And now a fumble. The ball's out. It's picked up by the Titans. And they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Well, that takeaway, partner, right there, that's a combination of coaching, execution and absolute belief because a lot of guys will look at the scoreboard and go ah 
This thing's pretty well done. But they still thought to themselves, if we could make a play, we give our team, we give our teammates a chance to win it, and that's exactly what they did. And yeah, the Titans getting set to go. So they need to determine if that knee was down before the ball was coughed up. And they also wanted to make sure that the ball was possessed as they were going through, that the ball wasn't working its way free before the knee hit the ground. Second down, Benjamin. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Third and short yardage. Cousins throwing the out route incomplete. It's Lamb. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. On first down, Benjamin. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Ten yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Going on the ground with Madison. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 24-yard line. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make the play on the football. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident. And then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And Rudolph has got it. The big tight end for a Viking touchdown. Kyle Rudolph, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early presented himself, no reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. I got him, I got him. Mariota now to throw on first down. He gets it to Humphreys. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. 
The completion good for three, and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Here's Mariota. It's caught. Humphreys. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? The completion good for three, and it's second down. Looking to throw again on second down. Mariota, this will be caught by Brown. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 33. Mariota going to bring him up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Roughing the passer, defense. Maybe a frustration penalty there because he's picked them apart. They've tried their best to get to him and haven't done it successfully. A penalty is a result of that hit there. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Throwing is Mariota. Open man is Davis. He's got it for the Tennessee touchdown. Corey Davis, his sixth touchdown of the season as his guys are back within a single score. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was the super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball in the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. Extra point by Marr, up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends with a Tennessee score. A five-point game now as here comes the kickoff. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Let's go. Let's go. And now out comes Minnesota. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage how would you say it? Consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. And nothing but daylight ahead. Pass the 20. 10. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. 77 yards. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. That's a pretty quick response to that last touchdown drive, and it seemed like they had maybe given up momentum. Well, not so fast. No, not at all, because they end up pushing the lead up once again, and you're exactly right. Thought momentum might have been shifting. Instead, they grabbed old Mo, didn't let him get to the opposite sideline. The extra point up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. 
This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Mariota sets to lead this offense. Down by 12, 2 minutes, 17 seconds to go. They have two timeouts and the two-minute warning to work with, but they also need two scores. They've got to go quick. And now a carry here for their fullback. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. Throwing Mariota, and that will be incomplete. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. Now Mariota, pass caught left side by Humphreys. And it's a fumble, and the Vikings pick up the football. And he's able to bring it up five yards shy of midfield to the 45-yard line. Well, that drive wasn't a case of wanting to put points on the board. It was needing they to, had to having had to, to, and they didn't get it done. Yeah, didn't get it done, and now you look at the situation and the point differential, two scores, pretty much game, set, man. How about the takeaway, though, huh? How about those defensive guys? The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as it comes with a minute four left to go in the game. Check, check, watch 54, watch 54. Let's go, D. It's gonna be a long desert. And they'll indeed take a knee. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Cousins just going to take this one down to a knee and end it. And this is a way. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Let's go, boys. Bring it up. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one, certainly defensively. Stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So for Minnesota, their very slim playoff hopes remain as they move to 6-7 six and seven on the year. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Philly to take on the Eagles. Meanwhile, for the Titans, it's going to all but eliminate them from the playoff picture as they fall to 5-8. and eight. And they'll try to turn things around next week as they have a matchup in Cincinnati against the Bengals.